Hey everyone, this is Vanessa. Welcome to Collide Center Ministry Online. This is Wednesday Night Live. We hope that you have had a great week and we are excited that you are joining us. First, we would like to let you know that we are giving away a free DoorDash order at the end of broadcast. In order to enter, you need to like and comment before the video ends. We will announce the winner in the comment section at the end of broadcast, so stay tuned and good luck. All the information you need is emailed out in our newsletter each week. So check it out and let us know if you need help getting in. Thank you all for joining us. We're glad you are here. Remember to like and comment for a chance to win the prize and share this video to help others see it.
In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still. When striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in help, this babe, this gift of Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid Here in the death of Christ I live Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Up from the grave he rose again And as he stands in victory Since curse has lost its grip on me Hey everybody, welcome back to Clyde Student Ministry Online. My name is Matt and this is a new month and a new series. This series is called Jesus is fill in the blank. All right, just Jesus is, well, that's what we're gonna talk about. Tonight in the next three weeks, so the four weeks, four Wednesday nights of April, we are doing this series, Jesus is, and every week we are going to fill in the blank to answer that question. 
Now this is the most important question we could ever ask. It's the most important, you know, mental heart activity we could ever do. We love playing games. We love the which way is the turtle going to go and, you know, what, what emojis, uh, what movie, you know, our song do these emojis represent. But this is the actual, like, time to fill in the blank, time to, to answer the question, time to, you know, sort it all out. What does this really mean and what does this really matter? Because this, this question of who is Jesus, well, this changes our lives forever. This could change eternity forever. So this is a question we really want to think about. Now, you've probably heard of the name of Jesus before. You guys are with us here at Clyde Student Ministry, the church at Sever Run. There's a, there's a pretty high chance of, I've heard of the name of the person of Jesus before. Now, you might think that you know a lot about him, and I think you probably do. But this is, again, an opportunity to answer this question and to pull some more truth and to dive a little deeper. We want to continue to grow, you guys, this season of life, middle school and high school. This is not your finish line for, for learning and growing in your faith. This is not where it all stops. This is where it really starts. You know, this is where you really get to plant some seeds that are going to grow and blossom and become stronger for the rest of your life. This is where we get to really start to dive a little deeper. We can always go back and sing the Yes, Jesus Loves Me songs, and he holds the whole world in his hand songs, if you guys like grew up singing any of those. But what does it really mean? Who is Jesus really? Now, there's a lot of thoughts out there. There's a lot of ideas out there. He is a great guy. He's a great teacher. Jesus was a carpenter. He built stuff with his hands. Um, he might have been a guy that walked on water, turned water into wine. And then if you've ever spent any time really on YouTube or TikTok or even Instagram, you've seen a lot of ideas, a lot of like far to the right or left crazy ideas of who Jesus was or is or could be. But who is he really? And how do we kind of move forward in our life? This is not the finish line, it's a starting line. So no matter where you are in this journey of your faith, maybe you have some pretty strong deep you know roots already i know who jesus is not i know everything but i know that he's my savior i follow jesus i've made this decision some of you have been baptized before like you, you've you've made some really big steps already maybe some of you haven't maybe you're kind of right there i've heard a lot about him I, i've i've even you know watched videos and, and sung songs and gone to church but i've never really like taken a step or jumped or moved in my faith before and just maybe, maybe a couple of us tonight or whenever you're watching this, like, I have no idea. Like, I don't have the first clue who Jesus is. I know who other people say he is, but I don't really know. This is not really my belief or my conviction yet. And the truth is, all of us have been there at some point in our life. And all of us know someone and care about someone, a friend, a family member, a classmate, a neighbor, somebody who is there, who is in that spot of, I have no clue or I don't even care. But we're gonna ask the question anyway, who is Jesus? Jesus is fill in the blank and then why does that matter? And what does that mean for you and for me if these things are all true? So let's kind of dive in together. We're gonna to kind of look at this big, this big idea starting in week one that Jesus is God. It's something that we say, it's something that we sing, but what does it actually mean? Jesus is God. We oftentimes we have this idea of, of God up in the clouds. Sometimes the like cartoon version of God is always like a Caucasian man with a beard um, who floats up in the sky. And then there's Jesus, you know, God's up here that there was Jesus who was this Jewish man about 2000 years ago who was born uh, and was killed, and we celebrate on Easter that he rose again. So, so God, Jesus, they're, they're the same. Jesus is God, but they're different. They're in two different places. They're, they're different roles, different people, right? So the truth is Jesus is God. Jesus is God. He has the name, the Son of God. They are connected, combined, and, and this is a life-changing, eternity-changing reality. 
So let's kind of, let's explore this a little bit. We're going to open up our Bibles together and we're going to go to the Gospel of Mark in chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 verse 1. When Jesus returned to the city of Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was coming back home. Soon the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors that there was no more room, even outside of the door. While he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring him to Jesus because of the crowd, so they dug a hole through the roof above his head and they lowered the man on the mat right down in front of Jesus. Just pause real quick. Can you guys imagine like you've got a friend who is who is in really, really bad shape, right? He's paralyzed. We, we don't know. I don't think if he was born this way, if he was injured or whatever happened, but this guy was, was not doing well. And they just believe so strongly that Jesus, I don't really know who he is, but I've heard so much about him. I, I've heard so many different things. If we can just bring our broken selves and our friend who's in trouble, if we can just bring him to Jesus, everything will be okay. Have you ever like tried to get in somewhere? Have you ever like, I really need to get into my school, but the door's locked, or I really need to get into my house, but I'm locked out? Like, <laughs> I guess what I'm asking you guys is have you ever had to break in somewhere before? Uh, maybe we shouldn't answer this question. I won't answer this question. I don't want to incriminate myself, but the answer is yes. I've like locked myself out of my car, locked myself out of my, my house, like, and you're just like praying for, you know, a, a window to be down or something to get back in. But these guys are, are really the best friends ever. And this is another question. Like, what would you do for your friend if they were in trouble? Would you, you know, climb, like carry them onto a roof and lower them down? Like, what would that look like? There's a bunch of people in your house. And just imagine all of a sudden the, the roof, like dust starts following and all these like feet all of a sudden start kicking through. And then there's this man on a mat being lowered into your living room. Like this has got to be the weirdest, wildest afternoon ever for everybody. This has to be a really crazy situation. But these really, really good friends, they want to help their guy out. So they, they put him on a mat, carry him up on the roof, and then lower him into the middle of this house. Pretty insane. Let's, let's jump back into verse 5. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, My child... Your sins are forgiven. Now, there's a reason why Jesus says this. In, in this time, in this community, people believed that things that happened to you, it was kind of like karma. They believed that like bad things happened to people who sinned. Or maybe even if your parents sinned, then the kids would, would be born blind or, or deformed or paralyzed. Maybe this guy, because he was injured, the, the idea in the community may have been that he did something wrong, so he deserved to be paralyzed, right? That's kind of the way that people kind of thought and operated at this time. So Jesus sees a paralyzed man, and he says, you know, my child, your sins are forgiven. In verse 6, but some of the teachers of religious law, some of the Pharisees, were sitting, uh, were sitting there and thought to themselves, Wait, what did he just say? What is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only, only God can forgive sins. Verse 8, but Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. I mean, Jesus, being who he is, knows what the people are thinking. And so he asked them, why do you question this in your heart? Is it easier to say to a paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? I mean, like, anybody could just say that, right? Like, that's an easy thing to say. Or, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Whoa, whoa. I mean, that's, that's, a whole different, that's a whole different category. Anybody can tell a paralyzed person, your sins are forgiven, because you don't see sins, like, you know, flop off of somebody uh, when you say that, right? Like, you can say, hey, man, I forgive you. You don't physically see the, the like, scars and, like, whatever sins might look like on your skin, like jump off and go away. But what if I had said, stand up, pick up your mat and walk? So in verse 10, I will prove to you that the son of man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. So Jesus turns to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat and go home. Verse 12, the man jumped up 
grabbed his mat and walked out through the <laughs> walked out through the door past the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, "We've never seen anything like this before." This is one of the coolest stories in the Bible because it, it kind of shows us this reality that we're talking about. There's a lot of people who know who Jesus is from just the the buzz. I've heard other people say he's this or that. I've heard that he's going to be here. I heard that this is a place I can come and find Jesus. But a couple people really believed. I don't know everything. I don't know all of the details, but there's something about this person. There's something about Jesus that I, I need to go to him. This is the place I need to go. This is the person I need to talk to. My friend is in trouble. I'm going to, I'm going to drag my friend to go meet Jesus. And then there's this confrontation between Jesus and these teachers, these religious leaders, and they're like, mm, only God can forgive sins. And this is where Jesus really shows us who he really is. He says, I'm going to forgive your sins, and to prove that I have the authority, that I have the power, because right, only God can forgive sins. So to prove that I have the authority and the power of God to show you that I am, in fact, God, I'm going to not only forgive these sins, but I'm going to tell you to stand up, pick up your mat, and walk on out of here healed and brand new. And this guy, who again, you got to remember, his friends put him on a mat, carried a bump on the roof, dropped him down into the living room, gets up, picks up his mat, and just like walks out the door. It's this moment, this defining reality, that only God, only someone who is God can forgive sins. Only someone who is God can change and heal and repair something that is broken. So we know Jesus is God because no one else can do what Jesus did. No one else can do the things when you say, I'm going to forgive sins. No one can forgive sins. Only God can do that. And Jesus says, I'm going to prove to you I'm God. I'm going to show you, in fact, that I am God because not only are his sins forgiven, but get up and walk and be free, be healed. I I'm going to, to fix what is broken in a way that only God can do that. You know, we celebrate that, that even though Jesus was killed and put on the cross and it looked like he was in trouble, on Easter Sunday, we celebrate that Jesus got up and walked out of the grave, that he healed himself, that he conquered sin and death and hell. We can't do that, guys. Humans can't do that. Nobody can do that except for God. So Jesus is looking at, at our doubt and our suspicion of, I wouldn't believe anybody that walked into this room off the street and said, I am God. Quite honestly, I would be tempted to call 911 or like, I don't know, we like, buddy, you need some help. You are not God. But if I saw someone doing things and, and, and living and changing the world in a way that no human can, then all of a sudden I have to think. And friends, you have to stop and think, who is this person? Because only God can forgive sins. Only God can, can heal someone like this. Only God can be raised from the dead and conquer what no, one, no, no human can conquer in sin, death, and hell. No one else can do that but God. So I see and know that there is God the Father, and then I see Jesus, who claims to be the Son of God and claims to be God himself in, in a different form, and I have to wonder, what if he is true? What would that mean for me if Jesus really is God? Because only God can forgive sins. So if the person who says he is the Son of God came and died for my sins and rose again, what does that mean? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for me? What does it mean for your brother or your sister who doesn't believe in Jesus? What does it mean for you if you've been thinking about, I want to put my faith, I want to believe in something bigger than me, but I'm just not quite sure. What if the person who, who claims to be the Son of God is the Son of God? What if this person, Jesus, is who he says he is? You know, the Gospel of John chapter 1, I'm going to read from the New Living Translation, the NLT, so it might be a little different from yours, but it gives us this bigger picture of who Jesus really is. In John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning, the Word, Jesus, already existed. 
And he uses, like, in quotes, the word is referring to Jesus. The, the word already existed. The word was with God. So there's God and the word. And the word was God. They're, they're, they're separate and the same. Right? It's mind-blowing, right? Verse 2, he existed in the beginning with God. So in Genesis 1, like in the beginning was the word. In the beginning there was nothing but God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So God existing as, as God the Father, Christ the Son, the Holy Spirit that fills and, and, and sustains all. There was nothing else, just these three. And really these three are one. God created everything through Jesus and nothing was created except through Jesus. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light that shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So what does it mean for you if Jesus really is who he says he is, if Jesus really is God? For the next couple of weeks, we're gonna to continue to look at the life and the story and key moments from Jesus, from the Bible, to learn more about who Jesus really is and to continue to wrestle with this question. We're not gonna find every answer, but we're going to grow closer step by step together. So my prayer and my hope is that you continue to open your heart and your mind to hear these words, to hear these stories, and to begin to ask yourself this question, who is Jesus? And if he really is God, what does that mean for me, for my friends, for my family? And what does this mean for the rest of eternity? See you again next week. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me and know oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child.
Hey everybody, thanks again for watching. We hope you had a great night. Don't forget to check out our social media accounts on uh, Instagram and Facebook and TikTok. We're Collide Student Ministry. We've got a lot of updates and make sure you watch for our weekly newsletter as well. This upcoming weekend, this weekend after Easter, we have the opportunity to host another worship workshop. So it's Sunday, April 11th from one to three o'clock. It's a worship workshop. Any of you that play instruments or sing or wanna learn more about how to run tech and sound and lights, come and join us. It's a free opportunity to practice your instruments, sing, learn more about the tech booth. We'll have pizza and chicken nuggets, and it's open for all uh, middle school and high school students. So I uh, want you guys to join us there. Also, one to three o'clock, we have our outside sports club on Sunday, uh, April 11th, so you can come play some basketball with us. And then this Sunday night from six to 8 p.m., we are having a bonfire outside in our field. We're also going to probably play some, some kickball, um, make some food, you know, roast some marshmallows. It's going to be a lot of fun. You and your friends are invited. To, it's a free event. Again, Sunday, April 11th, 6 to 8 o'clock for our Clyde Student Ministry Bonfire Night. Hope you guys check out the comments for our weekly winner and our DoorDash prize. Uh, we will look forward to seeing you guys again next week as we continue our series, Jesus Is. And then don't forget to join us tonight for small groups on Zoom. You can find out all the information on where to find us in our newsletter. We should get started and should be open about 7.40 or 7.45. So if you come in and nobody's there, just come back again in a couple minutes. Sometimes we, we're not set up immediately after this video. It takes us a few minutes, but we will be there 745. So don't, don't miss out. We'd love to see you guys for small group time. We hope you guys know we're praying for you. We hope you have a great rest of your week and we'll see you again soon. See ya.